Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you guys are new to the channel, be sure to click that subscribe button and turn on post notifications. I would like to give a special thanks to South Day Kia for giving me time with the 2022 Kia K5 GT. Starting pricing for the GT is at $31,190, including destination. This one stickers for $41,879. If you're in the market for a Kia, you can go check out South Day Kia and they will get you into a new or pre-owned vehicle. But let's talk about the front styling of the K5 GT. Looking here at the front styling of the Kia K5 GT, as you guys can see, this vehicle looks more aggressive compared to a standard K5. As you guys can see, looking at these headlights here, these are an LED projector headlight with an, with an automatic low and high beam, LED turn signal, and LED daytime running light. I do like the aggressive Tiger Nose grille. This also wears a new Kia emblem on top of the hood. And there is a front facing camera because my model is fully loaded. And down here is for the driver's assistance. We'll talk about that in the actual test drive. And my model also comes equipped with LED fall lights here. But stepping away from the K5 GT, as you guys can see, like I mentioned, very aggressive styling here. Looking at the side profile, this has a 112.2 inch wheelbase with an overall length of 193.1. So Kia got the proportions right here in the midsize sedan segment. Looking at these tires and wheels, I think this is the best rim design that you guys can get on the K5. The GT exclusive brake calipers. Look at those rotors, guys. Very large rotors. These are a 245 40 tire they're wrapped in this 19 inch rim design like i mentioned really nice rim design there's this black dial mirror cap here with this led sight marker and my model does have this large panoramic sunroof here making our way to the rear of the vehicle as you guys can see there's this fastback design quote unquote just like the kia stinger there's this nicely integrated rear spoiler here the tail lights are going to be an led combination which is an led brake light incandescent turn signal and reverse light most people might do aftermarket to make them full leds there's a gt badge rear parking sensors this also the g this is also the gt as you guys can tell by the quad tip exhaust so this one sneaks up on you if you're not sure if this is a gt or not just look at the rear exhaust because it does have that quad uh, finish to it or the gt badge if they do not debash the vehicle there's the kia uh, emblem right here there's also the k5 badge and to open up the cargo right here press that button there and it reveals 16 cubic feet of space it's not the biggest in the segment that still belongs to the honda accord which which has around 16.7 cubic feet of space but this does offer plenty of space and the seats also fold down in a 60 40 manner and underneath here kia does equip this with a temporary spare tire instead of a fix a flat kit but let's hop into the interior of the kia k5 gt Sitting inside the interior of the Kia K5 GT, as you guys can see here, my model does have this black interior with the red stitching and red piping. Uh, I showed you guys a K5 uh, recently, so I'm gonna be very brief with this interior, but reaching over here to shut the door of the K5. The push button start is gonna be right here on the dash. Once you guys do that, the vehicle will start up. You can hear that snarl from that 2.5 liter four cylinder. As you guys can see, you're greeted by these large, well, by this large screen right here is a 10.25 inch display. It does support Apple CarPlay and Android Auto via the USB cable, not wireless. But let's talk about the materials. It's gonna be a nice material here with this aluminum painted door handle. There's two person memory seat. There's some aluminum trim here. I like this nice texture, like gloss, uh, like trim here. It also has the Bose audio sound system, which sounds pretty good. It is auto up, auto down for R4. Some other competitors only offer up and down for their driver and passenger there's your lock control window controls here and you can power fold the mirrors in via that button right there your dimmer switch lane keeping assist traction control trunk release button this is manual tilt and telescoping wheel it does offer a good amount of range and adjustability there's the headlight and turn signal stock one wiper stock is there paddle shifters for the eight speed dual clutch transmission the materials on the instrument panel are going to be a hard touch plastic but around here is going to be a soft touch material i'd like the large infotainment system here two air vents here of course there's your hazard button this also has dual climate control my model is fully loaded because it does have the heated and cool seats the cool seats blow nice air is the heated steering wheel function your drive mode selector which shows you a custom sport plus it turns off the traction control there's a sport mode and normal unfortunately there's no hybrid mode of course i wouldn't expect that here on the gt model putting the vehicle into reverse it does reveal a top down 360 view that you can zoom in and out of there's trajectory with distance markers there's front and rear parking sensors Kicking over here to the left, there is a sport mode in the transmission. Putting the vehicle back into park. There's two USB cords. Uh, there's two USB ports there. My iPhone 13 Pro Max does fit. There's a wireless phone charger here, two cup holders, electronic parking brake. You can access the camera via this button here. There's parking sensors and auto hold function. This area here is gonna be nice and padded. It does reveal a decent amount of storage. There's a USB port in there as well. The seats, they're aggressively boasted, of course, as a GT model, so I would expect them to be aggressive. There's a GT badge, nice red stitching and piping. And above me, there is this large panoramic sunroof. 
it does let light into this cabin. As you guys can see, it does open up with one switch of a finger. Looking at the glove compartment, it does offer a large storage. But overall, the interior of the GT does have a nice interior, but let's hop into the back seat. Getting into the back seat of the K5, as you guys can see, looking at the door panel materials very quickly here. Really nice material. There is this aluminum painted door handle with this aluminum trim here. Nice uh, red stitching here. The switch gear feels nice. There's this gloss black trim. This area here is slightly padded. There's additional uh, storage space down here. As you guys can see, plenty of space in the back seat of the K5. But getting back here, Kia says this has around 35.2 inches of legroom. I have plenty of space underneath the driver's seat. There's two uh, mat pockets back here for storage. You also have two USB ports where air vents. This hump does intrude into the middle passenger space, but you can fit a middle passenger here if you would like. I'm surprised to see that there's this hump here because it's a front wheel drive car. The, the seating back here does feel very supportive and padded. Putting this armrest down here, it does reveal two cup holders. And above, there's this large panoramic sunroof to let light and air into this cabin. But overall, the back seat of the K5 does feel spacious, even though Kia says this has the least amount of legroom in the segment. Looking underneath the hood of the Kia K5 GT, Kia will offer this with two powertrains. The base models get a 1.6 liter turbocharged four cylinder. It's paired with an eight speed torque converter automatic. If you guys don't want that powertrain, Kia will happily sell you this 2.5 liter four cylinder, which produces 290 horsepower and 311 pound feet of torque. It's paired with an eight speed wet dual clutch transmission. Fuel economy is rated at 24 in the city, 32 on the highway, and 27 combined and as of this filming Kia does not offer a, a hybrid powertrain so you look at the other competitors if you want that hybrid option so starting off in the 2022 Kia K5 GT <laughs> every time I drive this car this car always puts a smile on my face the performance is just out of this world this uses Kia's 2.5 liter four-cylinder this powertrain makes 290 horsepower and 311 pound-feet of torque at a low rpm so this vehicle is very peppy and this also has launch control. This is the only car in the segment besides the Sonata inline to uh, offer launch control. No other competitor in the segment offers that, like I mentioned, besides the inline. And the inline does share the same powertrain as this vehicle. I'm not sure if, if Hyundai tunes it a little differently, but they do share the same uh, powertrain. Let's do a launch control here. Let's come to a stop. And if you guys wonder what that sound was, that was my GoPro stand, it felt. Turn off everything, switch over to Sport Plus mode, put on the brake and accelerator. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh shoot. The performance, I'm telling you, this vehicle will put a smile on your face. Turn it, turning everything back on here. Oh my God, the performance is just beautiful. And fuel economy really doesn't take a ding. It's rated at 24 in the city, 32 on the highway in 27 combined. And as of this filming, Kia does not offer a hybrid powertrain. I think they're lacking when it comes to offering that uh, powertrain because the other competitors offer like the Honda Accord, the, um, the Hyundai Sonata offers a hybrid powertrain as well, which is surprising, surprisingly to know because Kia and Hyundai are kind of the same company, even though they went a different route. But Sport Plus mode, <laughs> <laughs> and this eight speed wet dual clutch is paired beautiful with this powertrain. <laughs> and this thing downshifts. And this is a this is honestly a burnout machine. This thing will legit roast the front tires because it's just too much horsepower and torque feeding the front wheels and whatnot. And I still have the car. It's holding that gear for me. <laughs> Man, I just love this. I just love this powertrain, man. This thing reminds me of performance like a Kia Stinger, even though I'm not really comparing those two because the Kia has way more horsepower, but this just gives you that oomph that you're looking for in this segment. But I mean, this car is just super impressive. The seats, they're aggressively bolstered, and they're not aggressively bolstered like the Sonata Inline. Those have a more of aggressive bolstering to it when it comes to uh, not moving around but these seats they do hold me in place i'm not squirming around you know in the seats and whatnot i do like the red stitching and red piping that the seats um offer i like the gt name and the actual seat back which is really nice this also has heated in cool seats which is really good as well especially on a day like today it's kind of humid outside and the cool seats blow really good cold air up my back and on my butt a little bit that's a wireless phone charger all the nice features that you guys will want that's apple carplay unfortunately it's not wireless um kia hasn't even 
uh, updated this uh, uh, system yet. But and then in the future, they should be offering wireless CarPlay and whatnot. I'm pretty sure that they will. I think if you go for a lower uh, trim level or lower model that have the eight inch display, it does offer wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The visibility out of the front is great, even at the back. The side mirrors are really good. This also has Kia's blind spot monitoring, lane keeping assist, emergency braking, forward collision warning, also highway stir assist and adaptive cruise control. All the nice features that you guys want. Kia does throw everything at the GT uh, model here. The performance, even though this is a performance model, this vehicle is definitely a daily driver, of course. You can also get a 1.6 liter turbocharged four cylinder, which is the base powertrain. Me personally, I would just skip out on that powertrain. I like power, so I would just honestly just go for the GT model over the base powertrain, personally speaking. But like I mentioned, I think Kia is kind of missing that on the sales when it comes to a hybrid option. If you guys want the hybrid option, look at the other competitors. Um, but overall, I have no complaints, but if you guys can hear it, it cut power. Whoa. It did cut power, and the wheels were kind of chirping just a little bit. But if you guys want to smoke someone, it won't be the Honda Accord. You just won't beat it. I'm sorry. I don't know what Honda does to that 2.0 powertrain, but you will not beat a Honda Accord. You might beat a Camry with the V6, pretty sure of it, because that's a you know longer than tooth powertrain. But this dual clutch is uh, paired perfectly with this powertrain. Uh, me personally. Like I mentioned, I would just go for this, but this is the ultimate burnout machine because this thing will honestly leave two black skip marks in the road. If you guys are looking for great warranty and also performance, the K5 GT is a great pick in this segment. After spending time with the 2022 Kia K5 GT, hope you guys have enjoyed this review here. Be sure to follow me on Instagram at Drive On Reviews and hit that subscribe button and I'll see you all in the next review.